Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to continue to look at Node Package Manager. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And we've already done an Explorer, a Node Package Manager, uh, where we introduced it. It can be found on the code page here at Zim and then Node Package Manager NPM, and we've added a new section in there. And we talked about the what Node Package Manager is, and we went into the templates there and loaded in a view uh, template, and talked about Zim, introduced Zim, for if you were coming from a one of these frameworks and don't know, didn't know much about Zim, uh, that's a good place to go to because we kind of introduce it. So make sure you see that if you haven't. What we're going to do in this one though is load in one of the helper modules here. We'll load in 3JS. This time we'll go into a Svelte uh, uh, template and start there. Okay, so uh, to do that, we would go to the template. So here's the Zim templates. And you would find this felt down below. Oh, uh, there's instructions here. Ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -doop. And basically the first one is download the green uh, from the green thing here. So we're going to download the zip. And that gets the bunch of templates. There's four different ones available all in here, but we've just downloaded the zip like that. And that gets us this page or this uh, folder right here and unzip that if you want, or make sure that you grab one if we don't work in the zip file. So there's the templates, and we're going to grab this Svelte template right here and put it into our GitHub area. So Svelte, oh, we want to copy it though. So I right click and copy and copy here. And there she be, okay. So just be careful when you do that is that it shifts around me. Um, I messed it up the last time because I went to change it and all of a sudden it was different. So I'm going to rename this now, making sure that it's the spelt one that I'm renaming, F2. And we'll call this one Zim and we'll call it 3 because we're going to bring in 3 to it as well. So we did another one called Zim NPM, which was just our general one at the time. And now we've got Zim 3 that we're going to take a look at. Okay, because you don't want to work in your only version of the template. So now what I'm going to do is reduce this down so that I can see my VS code here and drop the Zim 3 folder onto that. Bing! And that opens it up so that that package is in our VS code or whatever your editor is. Okay, and we went through this the last time and talked about what was in here. The uh, package.json, for instance, is going to install Svelte for us and also bring in Zim there. So we can get started with that. If I pull that up, did you see where I got that from? So I just found that at the bottom there and pulled it up. That's our terminal, or you can go to terminal up at top here, or go control shift T, or control shift back tick. Okay, so here we are. We type in npm install, and that will install our dev dependencies and our dependencies here. This is a little progress bar made out of ASCII. How cute is that? And soon it will tell us that we've installed Svelte. Nice name, huh? Svelte. And there we are. So now if we look, our node modules are over here with all of the Svelte stuff, as well as there's the Zim package. Okay. And then if we run it, we should be able to see our sample. And so that is npm run dev, like so npm run dev, and then we right click or uh, alt click on that link, and somewhere right there is our dev example. We ah, are we smiling? Yay! Smile. Well, I don't know. It looks like some weird clown. Okay, so uh, that is our template, and we talked about that template, the how the dial is working, 
how we animated, how we did an emitter, how we did the pen, which is uh, these, many of these are controls. We have display objects, we have shapes, components, all in Zim. Now what we're going to do is bring in uh, some example of 3JS. And to do that, we will exit out of here. Oh, I didn't show you this last time. To exit out of this, we uh, control C. And that exits out of our run environment. And now we can npm install. When you're working with 3JS, it's expected that you would install 3JS. So there's three. I'm holding down the space and we're going to grab the typings for 3JS as well which was in at types slash three, like that. So these two things install uh, the three package for 3JS and the types for the three package and hit enter and that will go. We could have also installed at the same time there with another space, the Zim package for 3JS. Uh, I'll do that separately. So if we take a look here under our node modules, we now have under the types, we have three JSs there as well. And then if we scroll on down in the modules, it has installed three, hopefully. There it is, right there. Okay, and there's Zim. Now we're going to install the helper modules that help Zim work with three JS. And that is NP, npm install at zim.js. So all of those helper modules are at zim.js slash, in this case, three. The game would be at slash game. The uh, physics would be at slash physics. Pizzazz is at slash pizzazz. Cam is at cam slash cam. And then one day we'll have sockets as well. So if we scroll up here, brrr, now we've got under zim, we have both the create.js, which is a dependency, and then we've got the three um, helper module here loaded. So that's great. Uh, that's all that done. Now we have to go find where Svelte holds its code. So we could probably try the index, but it won't be there. It will most likely be in here and it might load this or that. And then here's where it actually is in the app Svelte with the Svelte icon there. So this is the example. It was importing these things from Sim. And then uh, we have a frame, and when we mount, it's very similar to view. When we mount, we have the settings for the Zim frame, and when we're ready, we run all of the Zim stuff inside of here. And then on destroy, we dispose the frame if it's there. Okay, so basically the same format as, as view was. And you'll find that React is pretty similar too, and then Angular is a little bit different, but the same idea really, if you're wanting to work, you should know probably how to work already in Angular, React, Svelte, or Vue. Uh, that's not what this is about. What this is about is how to then work with Zim. So really the Zim stuff is inside here. In the other one, we mentioned a place we could go out to the editor. There's some links here. We could go out to the editor and find a bunch of examples of things in Zim under the zaps. So we call Zim apps, we call them zaps. And the editor has a bunch of them. There's also more examples uh, at the examples thing. And you can, all of these examples work in the CD, with the CDN rather than Node Package Manager. So um, the code page has as well a template with the CDN and you just cut, cut and paste that into a text file or into an HTML file and you're good to go. That's it. Um, so you can do that too, or you can grab the Zim code and bring it into here. When you do, there's all these typings and there's a lot of typings in Zim. And one thing to note is we have the Zim Duo technique where we can pass in a configuration object or individual parameters in order. The configuration object is an object with properties that match the parameter names. So you can do them in any order and you can leave ones out. Okay, so that's the Zim Duo technique and that's why there's one extra override here or whatever, or overload right there. Would get you to that if we can press it. Usually there's a little arrow we can press through. Anyway, um, 
that's TypeScript typings and it's telling you and if there's ever a mistake in the typings you can fix it yourself uh, it would be under the node modules and then right down to probably the Zim unless you had three just or three typings if they were the Zim helper module typings those are available in the at Zim up above there but uh, under the TypeScript source here you've got Zim and then you've got the index typings. So if we ever make a mistake, like we're missing a color, actually we were missing moon just the other day and noticed it, then let us know. You can fix it, but let us know, and that way we can add it for anybody else, because there's a heck of a lot of these things. All right. <laughs> okay, let's get out of there then. Back to hopefully the easy stuff. So what we're wanting to do is replace this with uh, an example from the 3D world. So I'm getting rid of everything right down to the donate. And there's the ready, and there's our end of ready. So great, that's an empty. And then up here, we will still need to import the frame, but we don't need to import any of these things. Oops, frame. So now we uh, refresh over here. Oh, we're we're not hooked up, so like that. And we had closed the running here, so npm run dev, like that. Or indeed, we could have um, used the arrow up to find out more. But anyway, there's nothing there. Do we not have a cut? Yeah, we've got a background color, a gray, and then we've got a lighter color here. All right, so now we're back to just something like normal Zim. If we say new circle dot center, uh, that circle is saying it doesn't know what it is because it's not up in here. So we add circle. Sometimes that runs automatically for you. And there's our circle. If we set that to drag dot drag and save it, then we can drag the circle. Okay. So that's where we're at now, but we're wanting to make use of the three JS stuff. So probably the easiest thing to do is to go back to Zim here and take a look at Zim 3 right there. So at ZimJS 3, that's what we just installed. This goes out to Node Package Manager. It's the same pretty well as on GitHub here. GitHub, I'm on a dark mode, so I'll just <laughs> look at it on the dark mode here. So this is explaining what's going on with 3JS. It, it basically has a history of two parts. The first part is an earlier part where we brought 3JS into Zim. And that looked more like what's down here at the very bottom, where this is Zim and we're bringing in some 3D stuff and putting it in here and operating on it with Zim controls or what have you. So that's been around for a long time, maybe almost 10 years. And then recently we have launched in Zim 015, we launched Texture Actives, which is a way that we can bring Zim into the 3D world on any of the surfaces there. So these are called meshes. They mesh geometry and uh, materials together. And what we've done is made interactive textures that can go onto any material on any mesh. Okay, so there it is sort of overlaid on a model or included in the model, and that's a puzzle. And you can see these if we press on it. Uh, here, here's three uh, VR stuff to start, although this one right here, you should definitely watch that if you're interested in this. This uh, tells you all about it uh, with a video intro, but also a really neat example of all the interactive things in 3D. The one that we were just looking at there is this one, for instance where uh, we have a phone here, and then on this is Zim. So that's Zim, and we can pick that up and do the puzzle. Isn't that amazing? So we always wanted to do that, especially in 3D, where we were bringing in art that was interactive, putting it on the walls, but it was always static. So uh, now in 3D, we can actually do this. This looks huge, and we use the controllers and do the puzzle. Isn't that neat? So that was a case in VR. You can try it out if you have a headset and do the puzzle right in VR. This is multi-user where we're drawing on a pixel board, again, inside a Zim. 
And we've got a bunch of examples here. Uh, that's a HUD, which we almost could have done before. We actually could have done before, but we have, uh, it is in 3D. All of it is in 3JS. It's in an ortho uh, scene, basically an orthographic scene. Here we have 3D that is making use of Zim for the noise, but also this is a component called a selector and it's just running along there. It looks like it's 3D, but isn't that neat? And so it's really just a selector in there with a bit of HUD stuff. Here's a whole menu that's in there. Show, well, we can make something like the menu or I'll show you briefly. But there's 3D and yet this thing is a menu that we're, we're operating on. So I could show you that example, bring that into Svelte, for instance. Isn't that nice? And then we had other ones where we're using a first-person controller and doing puzzles that are on the cylinders. This one is physics uh, here. So if you brought in the physics module, you could um, we could demonstrate that if you brought in physics as well. Okay, so that was a major change to bring Zim into 3JS. And it's pretty industry leading. I don't think anybody else has that much in maybe Unity, but even Unity doesn't have everything that we have for the for 2D world. We're talking and uh, dragging along user editable paths and stuff. So Zim is pretty advanced and all that. There's all sorts of explore and bubbling videos as well as resources on the 3JS forums. So head on out there and on our forums as well. Head on out there and uh, communicate with us. Say hi and try it out. Uh, we'd love to have you there. All right, so that was like a little intro, I guess, to that. And what we're doing is we're going to go to the Zim 3 here. Oh, that's where we were, wasn't it? Uh, the Zim 3 and scroll on down. And here's a smaller example of that menu. Actually, you can click on it and see it. Oh. Uh, maybe not. It's a picture. <laughs> it's a picture. So there's the link, the link for it or the live examples right here. Uh, we put the link on the picture, but I guess not. So there we are dragging a circle on a menu. So we could grab that code if we wanted to. Or there's another example down here. Do I have to hit that link? What does that link take me to? Nothing. It just takes us here. Ah, fake. So live example. And this is a cube that we're drawing on with a pen. It's kind of neat to see us move that. <laughs> Sometimes it depends on which face you're on. It almost looks like we're just dragging it front to the next one. Okay. All right. So those are two examples. Which one do you want? Uh, we have a boat. Which one do we want? Let's just take the first one. Okay. So, actually, the second one has more 3D stuff in it because this one's got this thing called Make Panel right there. 3.make panel, which is ours. So, 3, little 3, is us. And we've added a Make Panel, which does a shortcut for some 3JS stuff. So, maybe rather than do the shortcut stuff, let's do the long cut. And at least in this one down here, we don't make a panel. We actually use some 3JS stuff to make a cube. Okay, because a panel is quite common, and we uh, brought that in and made a helper helper function to handle these all in one line sort of thing. But here we are on a cube, or you could be on a cylinder or a sphere or whatever, and make, make things interactive using texture actives. This is what we're going to import for this example. So we're doing the second example, and I'm copying that and putting it into the import of the Zim stuff right there. Oh, and tabbing that over. Okay, these are grain because we aren't using them yet, but there's the frame there, which we are using. Then down in the frame, we're gonna get rid of the circle, Boop. like so, and go grab the rest of that code that was in here. So here's all the code for the first part of that example. Oh, well, fourth example, I guess. And paste it in there. And we'll paste it very nicely. Tap, 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 tap. Okay, good. And what have we got? So, oh, we need to bring in, uh, we need to import three JS stuff. So there's the three, because we don't, we haven't imported. Uh, the easiest place to find that, I think, is if we go back here, 
it shows down below here the node package manager here's kind of what we're going to be doing we're going to be importing stuff from zim we're importing stuff from 3js so that's how you bring in everything as as the 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 um, three namespace there here is bringing in everything in zim in the zim namespace so we could do that and then start using the zim namespace but we were uh, doing each one individually Here's us importing orbit controls from 3JS. That's how 3JS expects you or, want, or wants you to import their orbit controls. And there we are bringing in the typings from, oh no, sorry, the typings, I guess we're done through a dependency. But this is us um, bringing in the three helper module and, and we're going to be using the three class right there. So I'm gonna grab these guys right there, not the top one. and bring it up underneath here like so. Okay, depending on whether you're lucky or not, it will recognize these things. You may have to, with TypeScript, you might have to uh, close down your VS Code and open it back up again. Okay, so you would close down your VS Code, go find your, your package, uh, your app package, and drop it onto VS Code again and open it up again and then these will come in. If they turn red, that's probably what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna save that and run it. Um, I might be running currently, so I did that upload it or not open, yep, it did. Okay, so here's Svelte over here and there's what it brought in. It brought in that cube and there we are drawing on it like so. So this is Zim with Svelte. And we were currently running our live thing, so it updated it. We can check that out by going to a red background. So I just went red and refreshed here, and there's the cube oh, in a red background. Okay. And we will undo that back to gray and save, and we're back to gray over here. Cool, huh? Isn't that neat? So the purpose of this explore is not to go through and see what's in. There's us creating a texture active. There's the pen and the motion controller. The texture active is the Zim side of that. And then here's the three JS side where we're using the three helper module to bring in some three stuff. We're making local variables of those so we can operate on them. We're making a new texture actives. This is kind of like the glue that that maps the Zim stuff to the create jest or the three JS stuff. And then down below we have a cube geometry. There's the texture. The texture is taking the paper, which is the texture actives, canvas property. So this is a three JS canvas texture. And we pass in the canvas from the, our texture active. Then we're using a material. It could use any material there. The basic material doesn't need lights. That's why we've done it in this case. There's other materials that can use lights. And then we pass in the mapping of our cube texture. We make a cube that is a mesh of those two things and add it to the scene. So this stuff pretty well is what happens in 3JS anyway. Sometimes we don't need to make a, an outside texture like that. We just pass in a color there, for instance. But uh, we might. Okay, and then we have one extra line here, which is tell the texture actives to add the cube mesh. So there's the, the glue. And what is basically happening is we're doing ray casting on this to find out where the, 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 the mouse is on the surfaces. Then we're passing that X and Y into Zim at the root instead of pointer events, instead of mouse events. And then Zim is acting on those. There's a few more things that we're doing. When to get to be a canvas texture, we have to constantly be caching our display objects like the pen and, and various things like that. And this, uh, this can also be editable text on here, which is very handy to have editable text on here. Any of the components, the pens, the motion controllers, the, um, uh, the emitters, uh, blobs and squiggles, animating. And so anything that we can do in Zim can be done on here. 
So if you want to find out more about that, I would suggest going to the Zim site right here. And if you go, this is the new stuff in the Zim 016, which features shaders, cool, and some other things. But in um, Zim 015, right here, Zim 015 is all that texture active stuff. Cool, huh? If you have any questions, then come visit us at the forum. The forum is available. Oh, that's the old one. So Zim015, this is what it looked like. And we were using Slack back then. But in uh, Zim016, which is here, Zim016, we have a new forum right there. If you hit the Slack, by the way, it would redirect to our forum here as well. And we look forward to seeing you. That was kind of fun, wasn't it? We opened up a Svelte app. We brought in Zim with NPM install. NPM, and then we installed 3JS. We installed the three helper module from Zim. Uh, installed the typings for 3JS. We can bring in examples now into that world and you can do all that stuff in your environment that you like. And then we NPM run dev to see it show up. And then we would NPM run build. And what run build does is it makes uh, a folder, like a zip, uh, I guess a folder for you that you could then put on your server and run it. So that's a pretty easy step. You just uh, take the, whatever folder they give you. One trick with that folder is they seem to be putting it in uh, the root, so a slash in the front. And for that to run locally, you can take out the slash and it will run. Yay! Or if you leave the slash in, put it on the server and it will run in, in your root there. That's assuming that you want it in your root. So just watch out, but you'll probably be able to figure that out. I am Dr. Abstract. This has been a Zim Explore. It's been lovely to have you here. Check out some of the other Explorers as well, or any of the other bubbling videos. There's lots, as well as a Zim Learn. And uh, yay! Come on, drop on by the forum, say hi. We'd love to see you there. Cheers. Have a great day or night. Woohoo!